In this episode, we explore the northwestern side of Namibia. Our goal is to conquer Van Sales Pass and head into the Marionfluss. After spending a night in Hartman Valley, we would head down to Puros and finally Itosha. So welcome to another exciting episode. sunrise. The Van Sales Pass community campsite is a stunning campsite located at the summit. It didn't have any running water, but this wasn't an issue for us, as our vehicles are built for this. Hardly a word is said in camp after the long day yesterday, and for what's to come today. We left the Fun Sales Pass campsite at the top of Fun Sales, and I'm scared. I'm not gonna lie. I yeah, I don't normally do this sort of driving, but hopefully this coffee will give me the confidence. And it is part of the adventure. But I'm looking forward to getting to the Marion Fluss at the bottom. That's that's the reward. With the tire leaking, I decided to soldier on, as there wasn't a safe enough location anywhere on the pass for a tire change. The ARB twin compressor makes light work of pumping it up. Okay, now you stop. This pass should not be underestimated. From what I've seen, there are two extreme sections, and this is one of them. It's vital that your vehicle and trailer are well set up and reliable out here. If something catastrophic breaks, you will not get it out. We take every obstacle extremely slowly. It's just not worth rushing and doing damage. Massive drop off. 
incline. Huh. Yeah, not easy. Not easy. But beautiful. Stunning, stunning, stunning. What a beautiful pass. Just gonna check on the other side. If there's anything. Fansales Pass is a mountain pass with an elevation of 958 meters above sea level. It's known as Namibia's toughest road. Yeah. It's fine, going around is fine there. Yeah. Fine, Chris. about halfway down from sales it's challenging it's, it's not shocking not as bad as yesterday so far but the view is just stunning and we've come over this rise and you can see the Marion Fluss and the, these mountains cutting their way through the landscape it's just amazing just amazing Old main emu suspension flexes its way down front sails. This is all about teamwork and with the brakes not working on the Echo, Ryan and Chris do a superb job in guiding me down with no issues. The pass is around 15 kilometers long but takes forever. The drive is very steep, hitting a 24% of maximum gradient through some of the areas. This is an extreme 4x4 challenge, which requires sound experience. The pass takes way longer than you think. We've been at it for eight hours and haven't even reached the nine kilometer mark yet. The scenery is just breathtaking though. You have to come here at least once in your life. Just a stunning view below 
you can see the Marion Fluss. This is the viewpoint halfway down. Stunning, just amazing. This viewpoint is at the nine and a half kilometer mark. Take a moment to enjoy your surroundings. It's spectacular, but you can see the next hectic obstacle from up here with vehicle wrecks down in the valley. I think it's about to get very serious. Okay, enjoyed the viewpoint, but we did see some cars and it looks like some trailers that have rolled off the next section. So I'm not gonna lie, I'm nervous. I'm very nervous. But that's why we came here. The view is phenomenal. I actually can't wait to get into the Marion Fluss. amazing we just came here and Chris said it's not too bad just a sheer drop Eesh. my man Chris how do you say it's nothing worse than we've done before <laughs> Bad Chris, oh man, it's bad. <laughs> yeah, let's go back, boys. Maybe fuck is this? Yes, yes. Ranger. No, this one's a Ranger, Chris. There's another car right here. Oh, yeah. Back tire is gonna go up and it's gonna come down and look. Okay. I'm trying to concentrate on all tires. It's just your back tires that I'm focused on. You're riding. You're f quite far from the edge, but so far on your left tire. So, so I'm fine. Right, I'm trying to keep you nice.
This really is a matter of life or death. I'll make a plan and permanently engage the handbrake on the Echo 5 in an attempt to reduce the risk. This may look slow, but one slip and it's all over. down the first piece and I'm nervous it's starting to slip a little bit but I can't even see the the trailer behind me that's at the angle that it's at how far the stress on my face says it all It's wanting to pull me this way, eh? I really am amazed at how well the vehicle and trailer are handling. A good spotter is vital here. The cameras just never do this justice. It is steep and seriously dangerous. We also meet up with now good friends Ben and Noah who are doing the pass in their 105 series Land Cruiser. If you would like to see how all four vehicles got down, head to the overlanding escape video linked below. That's why I'm going to go running to that. Yeah. This one came down here. Yeah. Mm. This does not 
Ed, you're going to have to lean into this one, eh? So instead of going up right, uh, you're going to have to go in left. I sort of need a spot here, bro. This whole car wants to go over the edge. There is a horrible off camber piece around 500 meters further on. Just look at the angle of the Echo 5. sales in the 100 series with the Echo 5. Brilliant, just brilliant. Tire is leaking again. Um, every time a rock nicks that patch it just pulls it out so I just need a bit of time to sort it out and clean it up. Um, but yeah, uh, happy days, happy days. Chris, you're at the bottom. Oh, I'm tired. <laughs> right, so that's it. Fun sales pass done. We are at the bottom. I can't believe it. It actually feels like an achievement. I know a lot of people downplay it and yeah, say it's nothing, but it's not nothing. This is awesome. Happy days. We're going to head into the Marion Fluss. Gents, we did it. We did it. How do you feel? Well done, Eddie. Well done, bro. Thanks for the help, boys. Hey, one man over landing escape. Another one tick. Ice cold Namibian tofu on the way to its rightful destination. And its rightful destination is right here. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. Hey, my man, I tell you, but that. <laughs> they tell you it's hard and you think it's easy and every time you think it's easy yeah it just goes up a gear hey i think the worst part is the off camber it's horrid hey it's the off camber parts are the worst chris yeah it's uh, it's it's disconcerting i think it feels worse than it actually is um that one section right before the end that's that's fairly technical that's nasty um but is it as bad as people say i'm not really. no it's worse <laughs> are you serious <laughs> chris no i didn't find it that bad Jesus. yesterday it was maybe less technical but it was more of it i found that worse because yeah. it just feels like it never ends yeah and i also find like this stuff on, on, here is a lot steeper yeah yeah. And yeah, the, the, the dangers are you look you're gone. Yeah, you look, make a wrong move, you're off. Eh? Correct. That that last that last section just before you the last it, five k's. Last my five man, k's, Chris, the you, threat's real. So. You know that piece that you said, a little bit off camber, but not bad. You know, I almost went over. <laughs> I did. I had to get Ryan. Out. It I was almost hectic. went over. It was on, it was on the because the trailer the trailer was pushing, pulls, pushing, pushing, pushing you. Okay. Fair enough. So the back wheels on, on the, I mean, the, you, you, you're carrying what, a ton there, Ed? 1.1 tons? Yeah. yeah. So, so the trailer changes the game. It, sure. it changes the game. But it did flip in a while. Oh, no, no, no one will take that away from you, my friend. What happened there and you're driving and spotting, I tell you, man, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. I wouldn't do this with a trailer. I wouldn't mm, do this. I wouldn't so. do this. I oh, definitely won't do this with my Conqueror Companion. Come on, Chris. Next time, let's do it. No ways, <laughs> I won't be on that trip with the owns. <laughs> we enter the Marion Fluss, something I've dreamt about for years. Soak it up, take it in. This is a once in a lifetime experience, but it's time to let the visuals do the talking.
This place is harsh, but unbelievably beautiful. Words just don't do it justice. So we're here in the Marian Fluss. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time. It's really unfortunate because it's stunning. It is, it is beautiful. Absolutely insane. But yeah, run out of time. What a, what a place, what a place. Let's head to camp. I'm gonna enjoy this until sunset. This is just stunning. Truly one of the most beautiful places I've ever been to. I mean, look at that. Special, very special. Privileged to be here. We head to Roydrom and take the road to the left, which ends up being Roydrom Pass. Right, 
So all the camera batteries are flat, so this is on the phone, so I'm not sure if you're here. This is Roy Traum, a man called Jan Jube. This is where we find our first stone man, and this road is terrible. Right, so we are in the middle of the Coaco Felt at a uh, place called the uh, Marble Campsite. Um, yeah, it's a uh, literally in the middle of nowhere uh, but we arrived here and it's full full of people and uh, after being on such a high getting down from sails and then uh, making it through the Morion Fluss which I must say is one of the most amazing experiences you'll ever have it's probably scenery wise the most beautiful place I've ever been to it was it was amazing. The sun was going down with these amazing grasslands and these trees and the mountains in the background. It was very, very special. An amazing moment. Uh, one I'll never forget. It really was incredible. Uh, then we arrived at a place called Roydrom. Now, uh, leaving uh, Roydrom, there's a sign saying left to Marble Campsite. What we didn't know is this is on a road called the Roy Drom Pass. And the first 25 kilometers is best described as hell. Uh, very loose rocks, uh, round and some sharp. And uh, you can get speed or you need to get speed to make it half comfortable. So you need to do around 30 k's an hour. But your car is just getting battered to pieces and... Um, I felt a pretty big impact around the one corner and uh, realized immediately I've lost all power steering. Um, immediate impact. And uh, yeah, I got out, checked. Didn't seem like anything was wrong. Didn't leak fluid, nothing. So the fluid was clearly low. So what I just did is topped up the fluid. I do carry extra fluid. Um, and then it was fine. And I drove around 10 minutes and then the same thing happened, which was obvious that it was leaking fluid couldn't see where though had no idea and i uh, just checked the rack end boots and that's where the oil's going so it's pretty clear that i've done a steering rack on the 100 the road was just awful so uh, yeah here at marble i think the options are tomorrow to head to Puros, just drive it without power steering to Puros and hopefully down to Tsumeb um, because there's no option to fly a steering rack out to this campsite. So, yeah, I'll try and just keep topping up the fluid, but the chances are the pump's going to go and just drive the car without power steering. Hopefully that doesn't compromise anything else, but uh, yeah, first breakage really. <laughs> After a 15 hour day yesterday, we are shattered and with no power steering, I have a feeling that today is going to be a rough one. Marble campsite was a good stopover, but I'm excited to head down to Puros to hopefully see some desert elephant. We head through the Ochiwa Plains, an absolutely stunning part of Namibia. After the Chiwa Plains, the road gets really rough. Hard pack corrugation with razor sharp rocks that destroy your tires. 
Unfortunately, it's very tough to film. With no power steering, I needed both hands on the steering wheel permanently. We encounter two more stone men as the road just gets worse and worse. It's literally six hours of rattling your vehicle to pieces. We are on day 11 of our trip, and while Namibia is absolutely breathtaking, the lack of wildlife makes these drives seem even longer. The fact is, in Namibia, you need time. Even though this is a 28 day trip, we found ourselves rushing every day. I would have loved to explore these areas more, especially the riverbeds, like the Honib and Harusib, where I believe there are desert elephants and lions. Even with the rough roads, the scenery more than makes up for it. We enjoy this rugged landscape as we close in on Puros. The diesel here is very expensive and isn't great quality. I paid 3,200 Namibian dollars for 80 liters and it's diesel I certainly wouldn't want to put in my 200 series. It's amazing to see how people live out here, but it was time to head to camp. Puros is a settlement situated in the northwest of Namibia in the Kuneni region. The landscape is a mix of grey hills, plains, wooded river valleys and spectacular dunes and has the Kumub and Harusub rivers close by. There are only 641 people in the vast area covering 3,562 square kilometers. Wildlife includes elephant, lion, leopard, giraffe and cheetah.
So, it was an overcast morning, but the sun's coming out. And I'm going to chuck my Red Arc solar blanket out. This is the 240 watt one. Testing it on this trip. And it is amazing. It claims 240 watts. It delivers 240 watts. So, time to chuck it on the bonnet of the 100 series. These connectors, look at how nicely everything is made. No wires exposed. Really is a different quality, Australian quality. I have two 105 amp hour lithium Enatec batteries in the back of the 100 series. These batteries are being charged with the Red Arc Manager 30. The batteries never drop below 60% on this trip. What a pleasure not having to worry about power and also being able to enjoy a great cup of coffee. We stay at the Omenia campsite, a stunning campsite on the banks of the Harusub River. Large acacia trees and views for days. A welcome two days rest and recovery at Omenye. And this trip just gets better because tomorrow we are heading into Itosha, a place I haven't been to in nine years and was really looking forward to visiting again. We leave early the next morning and head towards Itosha and Namibia just keeps delivering incredible moments.
Having crossed thousands of fairy circles, we head through Sesfontein towards Palambach and Kamanjab. While Namibia was delivering on incredible scenery, it was also delivering on the vehicle breakage front. And this might be a trip ender. This is the best fuel consumption I've ever gotten on this trip, which is, yeah, the 100 series is just amazing on fuel. Up the Grootbach Pass using no fuel, and this is why. Thank you, Ryan. I think that green diesel is starting to kick in now. So the reason for this is I've got a leak in the radiator. Yeah, uh, managed to seal the leak for as long as we could and then up the Groot back it just, yeah, it, there's a leak now at the bottom of the radiator. I spent a lot of money to make sure this didn't happen. I'm not saying that something we have done so far couldn't have caused it, but I've had to top up the long life coolant ever since I got it back from him, which I normally never have to do. So clearly there was a slight leak somewhere, slight. Um, every two three days I've been topping it up and yeah, so it's blown a blown a hole. So it's it's an automatic transmission So you shouldn't really be towing it, but I did phone Toyota South Africa keep it at below 10 kilometers an hour and in neutral in the low range and the normal gearbox and Every 10 kilometers stop to let the gearbox cool so you don't do any damage So let's hope we don't um yeah, so all for all you Ford fans and Toyota haters, this has got to be heaven because Ryan is towing the 100 series up. And uh, it's a pity with all these problems I'm having because it actually has nothing to do with the car, power steering issues, and the radiator issues. And he worked on all of it. So, yeah, he's the reason why I'm having all these problems and causing havoc on the Namibia trip. Sorry, boys. Hoping they'll continue to, to, to Tosha tomorrow and I'll stay just I think it's called Huida campsite I remember Ben Brown and Nicole Eddy stayed there and they're they're crossing um, Southern Africa trip So I think I'm gonna stay there and hopefully the boys push on I'll just wait for a radiator to get to me. It's the only option at this point I'm very despondent because yeah, I'm trying to make sure this wasn't this didn't happen, but yeah, thanks to to one guy, it's happened. So yeah. Anyways, we carry on. When you spend over 90,000 Rand on your steering rack and cooling system, you expect it not to give issues. This really is frustrating.
No brakes or aircon at 48 degrees Celsius meant this was going to be a tough tow. It was impossible to keep the rope taut with no brakes. The Wild Dog recovery kit was taking a hammering, but held up well, while the front end of the 100 series just had to take hit after hit. This is why I always carry a satellite phone. I keep in constant communication with Ravonia Toyota, who assist me over the phone in getting the 100 series to Huada safely. Huada is stunning, set amongst golden grasslands and grey rocky outcrops. It really is an amazing campsite. I spend a day here trying to make all the plans I can. From trying to ship up a radiator from South Africa because Namibia didn't have stock, to trying to rent a vehicle and drive the Echo 5 home and send the 100 series back on a flatbed. Because the reality, without power steering and a radiator, the 100 wasn't going anywhere. This is time to reflect on the tough times, but still take in your surroundings. This trip is a once in a lifetime for a lot of people, so it's important to remain grateful. The reality is that this was most likely the end of my Namibia trip. Coming up in the next episode, we make a plan to carry on on our Namibia adventure and eventually arrive at Itosha. Thank you for watching and a massive thank you to the product sponsors, Patreons and Go Get Crowd Fund Me members that made this trip possible. You are all legends and until the next adventure, cheers. Looking in, um, we do have a bit of a problem with our booking so we'll see if we can sort
Right, so it's our first day at Ukukuyu. Radiators in your 